In this video, I want to talk about a series of photos uh, that I did in Norway, in the Lofoten Islands. Uh, all these photos are shot kind of in the same way, edited in the same way. So I want to share with you tips about framing, composition, settings, technique, um, all the thoughts that went into creating this series. and. Uh, I hope all this information will be useful to you. Now, if you want to dive more into landscape photography and to learn more about my philosophy on landscape photography, you can check out my ebook. Um, you can find all the information um, in the uh, description of this video. There's a link to my website, and you see the price and the details uh, about this uh, ebook. And if you decide to buy it then i will say a big thank you for your support now because there are 23 photos uh, let's get started with the video from today i'm toma Fodatom here on uh, youtube and this channel is all about landscape photography as you will probably see or notice throughout this series all the framings are in uh, in a square format and i think it's very important let me just show you a few images and i think it's very important that if you want a set of photos to be considered a series, you need to have a connection between the, those photos, especially because we're talking about landscape photography. Uh, if you're doing photojournalism, probably it's easier because you're taking a series of photos in the same location. But if you're uh, a landscape photographer creating a series, I think it's, uh, it's vital to have the same framing, uh, the same aspect ratio, like I did here, uh, uh, one by one, a square format, the same editing style, the same type of framing uh, the subject and, and composition. So you need a unity uh, in, your, uh, in your photos. I will start with this image over here where I just, I decided to have only a, a part of the mountain because I really like this area where the snow was blown out from the ridge by the wind and um, because of that I have a connection between the mountain and the clouds it almost looks uh, it looks like the clouds are forming from this snow that is blown out blown out from this ridge and in, in terms of settings I'm having a hundred and sixtieth of a second f8 ISO 100 so these are normal normal settings but uh, the framing is simple so I'm I chose to exclude other elements from the photo and I'm using the sky or in all this area over here as um, uh, as negative space just to put this mountain in a better perspective now this second photo um, it's done during sunset and I'm having just a simple uh, rock formation over here which is actually a mountain but I'm having a simple cloud above the, the rock formation and this is a very simple way in which I try to create a connection between uh, the landscape and the sky and uh, as I'm looking right now, I think I I'm seeing a face over here. Let me know in comments below if you also see this one, this face. It looks like the eye, the nose, the lips, the head. It's it looks it looks like a face. I don't know what this would be in relation to the face, but for me this looks like a face. Uh, this is another simple image, even though I'm shooting in a square format. Uh, and all the photos are edited in, uh, with muted colors. It's not black and white, but are, the colors are desaturated. Uh, so even though I'm using a, a square format, I didn't frame this uh, mountain peak in the center of the photo. So I decided to place it a little bit to the left because I'm having the cloud to the right. In terms of setting, I have 0 0.4 seconds f11 and ISO 100. So the settings are again normal. And um, I will show you some photos that um, have different settings because I'm doing long exposures. 
this uh, this image has a three area uh, framing if you want so I'm having the surface of the of the water over here which is dark the Sun is really low in the horizon because you see only this area of the peak has uh, light from the Sun of, on it uh, so this is a, a simple way in which I'm trying to create separation between different areas so the the water is dark then the mountain is white with the snow and uh, I'm having the light over here and then I'm using the gradiated filter on the top to darken the sky and all these photos are also edited with a slight tint of of blue something like this but a desaturated blue and the decision for that is because blue is a cold color and I think it represented the cold a lot better this is a long exposure this uh, let me see 135 seconds f11 and I saw 160 and the reason for this long exposure was to calm the water down and see the reflection a lot better again I'm using the gradient filter for the upper part and the reason I'm doing this is to have um, a framing that includes darkness then I'm having light and then I'm ending the photo in darkness again just to have um, the subject framed between areas of darkness and it's the same case with this image over here this is another long exposure but it's um, let's see the, the setting 74 seconds f8 ISO 100 so this uh, the, the rocks um, are almost creating a, a, a graphical image all the rocks are dark and it's a it's a very simple image and sometimes these simple images have the biggest impact this almost looks like a like a graphical image of an abstract uh, painter or designer at least in my uh, in my opinion and this was a situation where because I framed this mountain in a way that it, it took the mountain out of the con of the entire landscape out of the context and with the help of the fog uh, this mountain looked like I don't know like a, like an almost like an abstract pattern uh, on a white grayish uh, canvas this is a minimalist shot and um, because you see these areas you know that this surface is uh, frozen water probably an inner lake and uh, I don't know if they did ice fishing uh, over here but I really like the small island in the middle of the lake with these trees that again they look really really graphical with no leaves on them and then I'm having all this negative space I didn't use the ND graded filter over here because I didn't need to I'm having all this negative space kind of like in the same tone and then the contrast point is over here now the reason for which I shot this photo is obvious I liked how the, the waves were splashing on these uh, rocks and use this as a foreground and the attention of the viewer should move to the mountain in the background now the settings for this one are a hundredth of a second f8 and ISO 320 and I had to raise the ISO to 320 because I wanted to be able to freeze the motion of the water to actually see the splash of the waves this is another situation that I'm looking for so as you can see the light comes from underneath those dark clouds and the light shines only on an area of the of the landscape so anytime this happens I'm really happy because I can have a beautiful separation between areas of darkness like this ridge over here and the clouds and areas of light um, like in this area again a very graphical and simple image when I'm having these three areas the, the water the subject and the negative space in this photo I liked the birds 
and also these uh, small clouds that are, are darker and help me contain this area because of the of the darkness in in the clouds this is something that I I'm always paying attention when I'm photographing in the mountains so whenever the light hits just an area of the mountain and this happens during sunrise or during sunset and over uh, over here you see a, a slight edge of light over here and then some more light on this um, face of the peak it looks really really well these kind of images I really like and I think they uh, they present the landscape in a very different way this is again uh, my way of framing the subject so I'm having darkness light and darkness and it's a simple technique that I'm using over and over again to frame the subject the over here I had some really dark and dramatic clouds and with the help of the and the gradient filter of three stops I managed to make them even more dramatic and even more darker and I'm having a very simple line over here a very simple leaning line that takes you up on this uh, peak and the settings are probably normal one over 125th of a second here I liked the the foam of the water and I did a long exposure of let's say 114 seconds f22 and ISO 50 and I had to uh, take the ISO down and uh, close the aperture up to f22 because it was the middle of the day and was uh, the sun was really bright but the image looks a lot better and the reason for which I'm doing these long exposures um, it's of course to, to improve the quality the visual quality of the image but it's also a curiosity because our eyes don't uh, we're not capable to see the world um, as we're seeing it now in this photo in a long exposure we're seeing uh, frames of the or slices of time we can't see the evolution of time it's a very interesting way to capture nature again the same technique when I'm having areas of darkness in the foreground and then the light in the background you have separation you have depth you you have multiple uh, layers this was a long exposure and I did it um, ex uh, right after the sunset and as you can see these are some simple diagonals created by the movement of the clouds or by this uh, edge of the mountain this uh, I had the chance to photograph the northern lights and I also have a much more commercial version of the northern lights with me as a silhouette and something like this but I thought of uh, creating a composition like this where I'm having these two peaks and the northern light it's, in a way it's it's like a connection between these peaks and the stars another long exposure uh, and again the reason is the foam and the settings 21 seconds for this one the the reason for this long exposure was during sunset and I saw this cloud moving and of course the, the movement of the cloud was captured and also the movement of the water and this final image which looks like a I mean this image in my opinion should be called the cold because it it's a glacial image and it's also a long exposure of uh, 179 seconds uh, probably I wanted to calm the water in this in this area and if uh, if you're not calming the water you see all those small ripples in the water sometimes it may look okay sometimes it can damage the photo but in this case I think long exposure uh, paid off so this was it for today and if you have questions use the comment section below um, you can also share this video with your friends and yeah, I hope you find it useful. And until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way that you can get better. Bye-bye.